Y'all are gonna wanna be buckling down for this one. You're gonna need a warm drink. Don't even get yourself a snack, get yourself a meal. <laughs> because April's unboxing is mega. So I have nine boxes to open for you guys today. We have all of the usual suspects here. We have a couple of extras, some special editions, a Waterstones parcel that I never got around to opening when it arrived and it's ended up in this stack. So I'm gonna give you a play by play of what we've got going on and then we're gonna start tearing things open. So my adult fairy loot hasn't arrived yet. I missed the delivery. I was away at the weekend and on the day that I'm filming this, it's no bank holiday. So I am gonna be including it in this video. It's gonna be coming tomorrow and I'm gonna be inserting a clip at the end, which I hate doing but needs must. Aside from the adult fairy loot, we also have the YA fairy loot and I am currently a rep for both of these boxes. So thank you very much to fairy loot for sending them my way. We also have my April Illumicrate. I'm also a rep for Illumicrate. So thank you very much to Illumicrate for continuing to send me your boxes. Is that all of my rep packages? I think it might be. I just, I don't really know what we have yet. No, it is, it is. So everything else I've paid for myself. We have a Waterstones pre-order, which I think is a just like a paperback release. We have the May Goldsboro. I am canceling the subscription. I'm just utilizing my skips to see if there's anything that I do want coming up before I do cancel it for good. We also have two Fairy Loot special editions. <laughs> quite substantial ones there's multiple books in in both of these the last book one is the locked library from harper collins this is the new ish this is like the third or fourth one fantasy and sci-fi monthly subscription and once again they have double boxed this it's in the normal subscription box inside a cardboard box which is a waste of packaging and it, it does annoy me because just send it in the normal box so those are all of the bookish boxes that i have to open for you guys today but i do just have one more thing from the sponsor of today's video which is once again the wonderful wild deodorant if you guys have been here a while you'll know that i have worked with wild in the past and prior to that I was also a user of this product for like 12 to 18 months before that so I've been using this for like two two and a half years now and this is especially exciting because Wild are teaming up with Disney to bring us limited edition Disney's The Little Mermaid products. Now, as you know, I am a big Disney girly. I am a big fan of Disney and I am very, very excited for the release of the live action The Little Mermaid that's gonna be coming towards the end of May. The case for this, the limited edition case is absolutely stunning and we also have a brand new limited edition fragrance which is ocean mist for our girl ariel so this one is it is a fresh scent it's like a fresh clean ocean breeze scent with i think it's got a little bit of jasmine and a little bit of lily in it which makes this a scent that i i really really like if you guys are unfamiliar with wild as a company they essentially make deodorants that take the nasty like harmful chemicals that block your pores and they're also extremely environmentally friendly so there's absolutely no plastic waste in any of their products like there's no plastic in any of the package that I've just opened for you guys. The cases are reusable, they're refillable, and the little refills are compostable. So you just load them. As you can see how easy like the assembly is, you just load your case, twist the bottom to like get the product to the top and, and away you go. I use probably like a refill a month if that and once you're done you can just take the refill out put it in your compost bin and load your new one in so absolutely no fuss good for the environment and also good for your body so if you guys would like to make the switch to wild if you want to get your hands on this limited edition disney's little mermaid case or the limited edition ocean mist scent you can click on the link at the top of my description box enter the code becca disney at checkout and get yourself 20 percent off the entire wild range and once again a big thank you to wild for sponsoring this video. Getting into this unboxing, I honestly have no idea where to start. I feel like I should end with Fairy Loot because I won't be getting the adult box until tomorrow. So this one is Locked Library. I have been spoiled for this because I've had it a while. So they have been posted on Instagram and this is, I don't know what this book is about, but it is by an author that I have previously read and enjoyed. So yeah, they have put the Locked Library box inside of this cardboard box, which is just unnecessary, especially because I don't know if they ship internationally at all. I know they don't 
not ship to the US. But if you're not shipping internationally, this is an excessive amount of packaging. It just, it really annoys me, okay? Cracking this one open. This one is the new Mark Lawrence release. They have used like recycled paper for like the inside of the box though, like it's shredded paper. So at least there's that. Oh, these edges are even better in person than they are on Instagram. Ooh. So this one is The Book That Wouldn't Burn by Mark Lawrence. I've read the Red Sister trilogy, all the first two books in that by Mark Lawrence, and I have enjoyed them. The back of this one says, all books, no matter their binding, will fall to dust. The stories they carry me last longer. They might outlive the paper, the library, even the language in which they were first written. The greatest story it can reach the stars. We have very pretty end papers on here. I also found out recently that all of these spines on the lock library books match so they're in the same format with the key across the middle and they all line up which is really cool there's foiling on the dust jacket that says the greatest stories can reach the stars and they all do come with a ribbon bookmark as well which to be fair i don't like them because they fray but it is a nice touch and then I've just noticed at the top and bottom are different colours as well. Oh, I didn't know that Mark Lawrence lived in the UK for a while. Interesting. But um, yeah, I don't actually know the, the synopsis. It doesn't really have one. He says, Avar has lived his whole life trapped within a vast library older than empires and larger than cities. Lavira has spent hers in a tiny settlement out on the dust where no one goes and nightmares stalk. The world has never noticed them. That's about to change. And it is blurbed by Robin Hobb as well, who's one of my favourite authors. That is super intriguing. I don't really have much to go off. The library theme is reminding me a lot of strange the dreamer but this is so vague that i'm very very intrigued and oh we have foiling on here as well which i don't know is whether that is in the standard edition at all so yeah i'm i really really like this edition and as i mentioned mark lawrence is an author that i've read from before so i do think it's something that i'm potentially gonna like after lots library we'll do the other outlier i guess which is Goldsboro Books. This one, I have skipped everything. So I skipped March, I've skipped May, and I think I need to send an email to skip June because I don't want that one either. But this one sounds like it's potentially something that I might enjoy. It's hard with Goldsboro because when I've read the books, the ones that I have enjoyed are ones that I didn't necessarily expect to. But this one is, it's a dragon book. And I'm not sure if I've, I've read a dragon book yet that I've loved, but I still like the thought of dragons and it's a really, it's a very pretty edition. And this one is Dragonfall by L.R. Lamb with this really nice stenciled edge. I don't actually know what it's about though. I did not do my research. But look, it's so pretty. How could I how could I skip this one? So this is also number 248 of 2000 and it is signed by the author. Oh, Ella Lamb is from California and lives in Scotland. That's a very vast change in weather. <laughs> but these synopsis on this one say, this is a long one, so this makes up for the shortness of the Mark Lawrence book. It says, long ago, humans betrayed dragons, stealing their magic and banishing them to a dying world. Centuries later, their descendants worship dragons as gods, but the gods remember and they do not forgive. Since they were orphaned, Arcady has scraped living, thieving on the streets of Vatra, dreaming of life among the nobility and revenge. When the chance arises to steal a powerful artifact from the bones of the Plaguebringer, the most hated person in Lumit history, they jump at it for its magic holds the key to their dream. But the spell has unintended consequences and drags Everon, the last male dragon who was once foretold to save his kind, into the human world. Trapped in disguise as a human, Everon soon realises that the key to his destiny and to regaining his true power lies in Arcady. All he needs to do is convince one little thief to bond with him completely, body, mind and soul, and then kill them. Yet the closer the two become, the greater the risk both their worlds will shatter. Sounds exciting. Sounds like something I can get behind if I like L.R. Lamb's writing style. I've never read anything from them before, but I'm willing to give this one a try. Get this out of the way. You have lipstick on your face, baby. <laughs> Next up, we will do the Waterstones parcel. I feel like I'm getting through these quickly. I'm doing well. Yes, this one is a paperback and it is The Blood Gift by N.E. Davenport. This is the sequel to a book that I really enjoyed last year. I think I read it shortly after its release and the reason why I was so excited to pick up the first one is that it had been compared to Red Rising a lot, which is one of my favourite series. So this one is about a girl whose grandfather has died. She wants to join this group of elite soldiers, but she's planning on postponing her entry into like this academy to grieve her grandfather, but her grandfather's like closest friend 
approaches her and says that he thinks that her grandfather was murdered and the guy who he suspects is running this training program. So the main character joins the training program to get close to the killer and ultimately like take her revenge. So I really really enjoyed the first one. My, my criticism of this series is that I feel like it should be a trilogy because the plot of the first book kind of about three quarters of the way through it wrapped up and then it moved somewhere Bree, put that down drop it three quarters of the way through the book it came to like everything drew to a conclusion and then they like set in and the plot drastically changed and i feel like that could have been fleshed out it felt very rushed and i feel like that end of it could have been fleshed out and been like its own entire book and i actually haven't heard very good things about the writing i've seen excerpts of the writing in here it's a little clunky which is sad because i was i was expecting good things from this based on my enjoyment of the first book but i will of course like give it a try and see for myself so i think the only thing we have now that isn't fairy loo is the monthly illumicrate thank you once again to illumicrate for sending this one my way and do remember that i do have that discount code in the description box if you want to check out illumicrate for yourself i don't think i actually remember the oh it's be my enemy no i didn't i didn't remember what the theme for this month is i will hold this open if you want to pause and read some spoilers and the theme for me is going to be what lies beneath which they've already revealed the book for me is witch king by martha wells but the items in the box are inspired by daughter of smoke and bone house of hollow and the whispering dark and the book of the month which is the witch king so this one seems like it's going to be a sci-fi and the first thing i can see on top is this oh this is a big old box which i'm not sure what this is because we've had a water bottle recently so i don't think it's that oh it's a it's a tumbler and it's a very very red tumbler this one oh says the vermilion bird and i'm going to make an assumption could be very wrong but my guess for this is that it's inspired by iron widow it is oh my god i'm very proud of myself i haven't read iron widow yet we also oh we have we have a pin flag which as somebody who gets a lot of subscription boxes i can always appreciate a pin flag this one is it's quite a big one actually which is good because then you're not running out of space but it is more like a i guess a banner i don't really like them with designs on if they are intended to be a pin flag because then i'm limited because i don't want to like cover the design with pins but it's inspired by the realm of the Eldlings by robin hobb i forgot about that i didn't my mind didn't go to the realm of the Eldlings because it's a it's a series that i've never had an item for from any box that i've ever got i will say though it's not i would have liked a charging book as opposed to an upright one but we'll let it slide we also have this feels like one of the replicas that they do which are replicas of like swords from is this the throne of glass one this has to be right yes this is for sure it's the sword of truth from throne of glass because it has the eye of elena at the top um i will say that this glitter is loose it's not like i would kind of expect it to be enameled over um to like you know seal the glitter in because it's just like it's literally like it's a glitter wand i don't know if you guys can see it but it is flying absolutely everywhere off this i'm i'm literally covered in glitter now then right at the bottom of this box we have the next papercraft kit these are designed by rosie thorn for illumicrate i still haven't done one of these i said i was going to and i should i should do what i did with the jigsaws from subscription boxes where i get them all together one day and just do them all this one looks like it's inspired by poppy war it is and it's like rosie thorn's art is absolutely stunning so i do really like the, the general like you know the artwork for this and then lastly we have the book of the month which i have seen because um illumicrate have run out of bags so it's just in bubble wrap but this month's book is some desperate glory by emily tesh this one is it's super metallic and i really really like the color palette on this can you what is going on i also really really love the printed edge on this one we also have what i'm going to assume is custom end pages that are different on each side oh and we also have foiling on the naked hardcover that says while we live the enemy shall fear us we are what's left we are what must survive so this one is a sci-fi that i haven't heard of so i will read you the inside dust jacket which is quite substantial and like with everything else in this video i will overlay the original cover over the top so that you can see like the difference in the customizations but this one says while we live the enemy shall fear us we are what's left we are what must survive all her life kia 
has trained for the day she can avenge the destruction of planet Earth. Raised on Gaia Station alongside the last scraps of humanity, she is one of the best warriors of her generation, the sword of a dead planet. Then Commander assigns her brother to certain death and relegates her to the nursery to bear sons. Oh no. And she knows she must take humanity's revenge into her own hands. Alongside her brother's brilliant but seditious friend and a lonely captive alien, Kia must escape from everything she's ever known. If she succeeds, she will find a universe far more complicated than she was taught and far more wondrous than she could have ever imagined. Some Desperate Glory is a thrillingly told science fiction tale about the wreckage of war, the family you find and who you must become when every choice is stripped from you. This standalone space opera is the highly anticipated debut novel from astounding award winner and Crawford Award finalist Emily Tesh. Sounds decent. I am a big sci-fi fan actually. I don't read very much of it but what I do read I, I do tend to enjoy. But I am excited to get to this one and I've just noticed the sprayed edges on here, the printed edges are like full wrap around. This one is not signed by the author which is pretty unusual for subscription boxes in general to be honest. But then also like a, a, a signature is not something that I actually personally care about like I don't care if my books are signed. So let me know down in the comments what your favourite item from this Illumicrate box is. It's definitely not the strongest Illumicrate box that I've received. It's kind of like a very mid one for me but I think my favourite item by far has to be the Farsia Banner just because it is Realm of the Eldlings which is one of my favourite series ever. And there is glitter absolutely everywhere. But next up, I'm gonna take a sip of water. So next up we'll go for the regular YA Fairy Loop. Thank you once again to Fairy Loop for sending me the YA and adult box to show to you guys. This one I also don't remember the theme of. I for sure know what the adult one is and I'm excited to see the Fairy Loop edition. But I don't think I know what the YA book is. So this one, the theme is Dare to Dream and you can pause if you would like to read the spoilers for this. We do have two fabric items. The first one is a pair of socks. I do really like Fairy Loot socks. I find subscription box socks to actually be very good quality. I think of all of the subscription box socks I've ever got, I only have one pair that have holes in and I've been getting boxes since like 2019, so that's like four years. But these ones have an eye on them, very pretty design, definitely useful. Oh, the um, underneath is his true story as well. Everything in this box is purple, which I, 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 I'm a fan of. We also have, is this a bowl thing? What are they called? Yes, it is a bowl cozy. I have one of these that I got from Elk Crate years ago and I actually do find them really, really useful. I think the Elk Crate one is made of sturdier material than this one. It holds its shape a little bit more and this one's more squishy. But essentially this is for getting a bowl at the microwave so you can put it, like if you have a bowl of soup you can put it in the microwave with this and then just like take the whole thing out so you can hold the bowl without hurting your hands. We also have a dust jacket. This one it has the same design on both sides it says we should appreciate the flower regardless of its roots. The fairy loot dust jackets do come with like a zip so I tend to use these for my iPad like if I'm going anywhere or if I'm reading a book that I'm transporting and I need annotation supplies with it. I'll put the book in and all of like like a pen and my um, sticky tabs and all that kind of thing. The quote on this one is Su Lin Tan, who I believe is the author of Daughter of the Moon Goddess. Right at the bottom, we have the next two bookmarks in the Fairy Loot Mythology bookmark collection. These ones are number eight and number nine, which are Morpheus, the God of Sleep, and Nike, the Goddess of Victory. And then the last, oh, is this a print? I thought it was the letter from the author, but no. This is a print of, it's not a series I've read, but it's Aaron Warner from the Shatter Me series, who I believe a lot of people are big fans of. And then the last thing before we get to the book is like the bonus collectible item from every fairy loot, which is a set of two tarot cards. So the idea is when you have enough boxes, you'll end up with a full set of tarot. Ooh, is this Daughter of Smoke and Bone? It is. Wow, I thought with how long fairy loot have been doing tarot cards, I thought they would have already been. But it is Akiva and Karu from the Daughter of Smoke and Bone series by Lainey Taylor. And in terms of tarot, these are the five and six of stars. And then the book of the month, I still don't think I know what it is. In this bag, we do have, oh, 
Is this a book by Alexandra Bracken? I didn't know that she had a new one out. But in the bag, we do have a letter from the author on the back arm and art card. We have the spoiler art bookmark and also the monthly fairy scoop. The theme for me is Feuding Gods and it is a fandom neutral box with inspiration from gods and mythology, which is something that Illumicrate have done recently. So I'm excited to see like fairy loots take on like a, a mythology inspired box. But this book is very pretty. It's got a navy edge. As you know, I love my navy. Navy. and this one oh i forgot about this book this is silver in the bone by alexandra bracken i honestly have been seeing this cover around and it looks so much like realm breaker by victoria aviard which is a book that i thought i would love and didn't but i feel like i've blocked it out of my memory but i will overlay the original cover over the top in case you guys want to see the difference between the two we have a really pretty printed edge on here i really like that edge and like the way that it matches the cover custom end papers which are usually yep different on each side under the dust jacket we have printed i do like me a printed hardcover this one's really cute like the art style i really like it i also have a feeling i would need to put it next to it to be sure but i feel like the spine on this matches the spine of the fairy loot edition of law by alexandra bracken which is a nice touch but the synopsis on this one says tamsin lark is a hollower breaking into the ancient crypts of dark sorceresses in search of the treasures inside now rumors are swirling about a powerful ring from arthurian legend a ring that could free her brother C cable Bell from a curse, but they aren't the only ones who covet it. As word spreads, greedy Hollowers start circling, and many would kill to have the ring for themselves. Tamsin is forced into an alliance with her rival Emrys, the last person she wants to rely on. Together, they dive headfirst into a viper's nest of dark magic and expose a deadly secret with the power to awaken ghosts of the past and shatter her last hope of saving her brother. Driven by love, revenge, and pure adrenaline, this is the stunning new novel from one of the top fantasy authors writing today. Which I mean, I don't know about that. <laughs> But it says decent. I am a little bit concerned now knowing that it's Arthurian because while Realmbreaker isn't Arthurian as in a retelling, it is Arthurian in terms of like the story structure and like the tropes in there. So now I'm even more nervous about this one, but I will give it a go. So let me know what your favorite item from Fairy Loot is this month. I think for me this month, it's the socks, which I've lost. There they are. But let me know down in the comments what your pick for this month is. I think in terms of boxes, it is, it's a decent, box from fairy loot once again not the best ever box but i would say that it is like fairy loot's average box is still a very good box you know where like i like the items in it it's just they've had some phenomenal boxes in the past before i get into the fairy loot special editions i'm actually going to insert my unboxing of the adult fairy loot here so you are gonna have to excuse my voice i woke up with a sore throat yesterday but it was very minor and i think through all of the filming i did yesterday i've ended up with a voice like this but my adult fairy loot has arrived so we will crack her open for you this book is in the lives of puppets by tj clune the waterstones edition of this is stunning so i'm expecting the fairy loot one to be even more beautiful but i really just don't know what to expect i haven't been spoiled for this but i'm super excited with it obviously being a book that i'd already pre-ordered and was already interested in so the theme on it is very clearly in the lives of puppets because the theme is strings attached oh the pages are i think the navy yeah it very much looks like the colorway on this is blue okay this is a completely different cover so i will overlay the original cover over the top if you guys would like to check it out it's a little bit more simple in composition than the original one like the original one has more depth but i love this oh the edge we have like forests and mountains on here. I've seen the original cover of this so much that like, I don't know if this suits the book, but I don't know, that's not me. I feel fairly judging it. It's me just having seen the original cover so much that I like associate it with that in my brain. We have custom end pages on here which match the cover and the color scheme they look like they're the same on the back under the dust jacket that is so cute i love that foiling i really really like that this is signed by the author so this one is about a guy 
who rescues robots. It's inspired by Pinocchio. And there's a human man who lives in a tree house with three robots. They find, I think, this android, which they bring back and like repair. And when the android boots up, it sends out a signal that the man and his robots live in this tree house. And I think either the man or one of the robots is then taken away because this android used to hunt robots, I think. So I think the bulk of the plot is like the little robot family going back to rescue the one that has been taken. This sounds really cute. I really, really like The House in the Cerulean Sea by TJ Klune. I'm really excited about this one. I really, really like this edition as well. The color scheme is very me. I love like the mountainscape in it. I really like the art style. I just don't know if I like it more than Waterstones. Not because this one isn't phenomenal, but because they're both very different vibes. I feel like I'm gonna have to read it and see like which vibe fits the book more, but they are both absolutely gorgeous. So I hope I give this book five stars so I can just keep both editions. So moving on to the Fairy Loot Special Editions, we do have two, but <laughs> they add up to five books. I don't have space for all these books, guys. I've just filmed an unhaul, but I feel like I need to do another full unhaul with me or like a, a try a chapter tag unhaul edition, which I haven't done in a long time. Cause I just don't, I just don't have the space. But what else is new? So this one is the Brandon Sanderson, the next Stormlight book from Fairy Loot, which to be fair, in terms of special editions, these aren't the most special special editions that I've ever bought, but I did get the one for Way of Kings to match. I am a Sanderson fan. I do really love the Stormlight series. So I picked up the Words of Radiance ones as well. This isn't a fairy loot thing. This is a this edition in general thing. But the the ones for Mistborn and the ones for the other series, like there's a First Law one and also Gentleman Bastards one, they have a matte cover and this is like a shiny printed cover. And like I said, that's not fairy loot. That's just the general edition. But this one, I can't remember what else is exclusive to these editions, but the the Gil Edgin or the, is it Gil or is it Glitter? I think it's Glitter Sprayed as opposed to like actual Gil, but that is exclusive. And I'm not sure, but I think potentially the, like the foiling on the cover as well. So like I said, no way, shape or form the most special, special edition that I've ever had, but they are like, I was gonna buy these anyway. So I got the Fairy Loot ones. And then the last thing we have to open for this video, the Pleated Prisoner set by Raymond Kennedy, which is the, just the first three books. I think it's gonna be a five book series in total or potentially six. So the second two or three are gonna come at a later date. But I do really, really like this series. I do still need to read the fourth one. It becoming traditionally published and the editions changing really put like a break on my progress with this series. But I do really like it. We have, they're not in order. This one is book two. This one is book one. And this one is book three. But this one is a fantasy romance series that is, is a King Midas retelling and it is about a girl called Auron who has been gold touched by Midas. He keeps her in this cage in his like gilded palace and she actually likes the captivity like she's in love with him but she had a very like traumatic upbringing and a traumatic time before Midas saved her so in this captivity she feels kind of she feels safe so Midas is planning on expanding his power expanding his territory so he sets out in the world to do this and he takes all of his prized possessions with him which includes Auron that very quickly proves to be a terrible idea which sets Auron on a path to kind of like regain her confidence and step into herself. It's really hard to describe because the trajectory of the series is very different from the setup of the first book. But I think it's interesting if you go into this not knowing like very much about the specifics of it because it was very much not what I expected when I went into it and I really love that about it. So the spines together look like this. The, I think are the covers, they're all pretty similar, but I just, I don't like the, I didn't want the hardbacks cause I are like the normal hardbacks cause I already have those in the indie paperbacks and I don't like the white covers at all. So I do really like the fairy loot ones. I will show you guys the edges as well and i also like that with the black and gold they match a lot of previous editions that fairy loot have done we have custom end pages but you can't make these editions without an excessive amount of foiling i feel considering it's like a king midas retelling they are all signed as well the end pages the end pages in each book are different and then these are the ones for Glean. So yeah, I'm really, really happy with these. I think they're really, really pretty. Um, and I'm excited to get the rest of them when 
they're announced and when the final book's released, which is coming out later this year. So that concludes this unboxing. It's a big one, guys. It's because of those Fairy Loot Special Editions. If it wasn't for the Brandon Sanderson and the Plated Prisoner set, it truly wouldn't be so bad. But I mean, they're both series that I've read before and I've loved, so I'm not going to begrudge myself nice editions of them. Let me know what your favourite edition is down in the comments as well, like what you think the prettiest book of these is. For me, I think this time it may actually be The Book That Wouldn't Burn by Mark Lawrence. I'm really impressed by the HarperCollins um, like locked library subscription at the minute. And I'm excited to put that to the test, like actually reading the books, hopefully sometime across like the next couple of months. But thank you so much to Fairy Loot and Illum Create for sending me boxes to open for you guys today. If you would like to check out any of these boxes for yourselves, I will put the link to their sites, um, all of their social media, and also any discount codes that I have down in the description box for you guys to go ahead and check out but aside from that guys please don't forget to like this video if you liked it and subscribe if you wanna if you do head into my description box you will also find a link to my goodreads instagram and twitter if you'd like to follow me on any of those as well as link to my bookish candle website the etsy for that and a 10 percent off discount code that's it from me today guys bye oh you bite your friend like chocolate you say you will go where nobody knows With guns hidden under our petticoats We're never gonna quit it, no, we're never gonna quit it, no